Hello and welcome to the Print and Snehish Alex film. Well, years back in 1988, on this very same day, that is 3rd November, India carried out an operation. It was an unprecedented operation because uh, this operation was not carried out on the Indian soil. It was carried out somewhere close, but in a different country, the archipelago nation that is Maldives. Now, what was this operation? Why was it significant? And who were these people who actually participated in this operation? Remember that Maldives had reached out to India, had reached out to the US, had reached out to uh, UK and even Malaysia. But it was only India which actually moved in. And for this, I have with me Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, who himself was part of the operation. He was in Maldives. He's the uh, former Director General of Military Operations. So he's a man who knows his history. And he's also a man who looked after India's military operations. Welcome to the print, General. Uh, thank you very much, and Jaihan, to all your viewers, and Jaihan to you. Thank you, sir. So, so what is this operation? What was it called? And if it, for our viewers, uh, this is uh, known as Operation Cactus uh, Maldives, and uh, we had uh, launched it on the third of November, nineteen eighty-eight. This launched on a cold start. You see, we were not prepared for it. It was launched. It was the first ever international intervention operation launched by the Indian Armed Forces. Uh, Albert on request from the President of Maldives. Uh, like you rightly said, the President of Maldives was a coup in Maldives on the night of uh, 2nd, 3rd, uh, 3rd early morning. And uh, they requested, the Maldivian government uh, put in a request uh, to the then U to US, the Soviet Union, to Pakistan, to Malaysia, to India. And uh, we responded. Uh, and we responded from a cold start. And uh, in a nutshell, uh, within 16 hours of the first indication of impending operation, we had executed the primary task of rescuing the president of Maldives. And uh, how we did it is a, is a, is a great story, uh, little known, uh, but it is one operation which uh, I think uh, uh, needs uh, greater deliberation, greater study. Uh, the way it was executed, the way it was planned, many lessons came out of it. And uh, thereafter, the, in India also realized the need for uh, uh, you know, designating, training and equipping uh, what we call a rapid deployment force, and it was post this operation that in January 9, 1989, uh, the parachute brigade, 50 para brigade, was uh, formally designated as a rapid deployment force. Also, because these, these contingencies can arrive, and it was a result in India that time. Uh, but it is 1988 to to this day. Look at the look at the way we have moved forward. But I think that was the change point. And December 1988, uh, Time magazine uh, came under the cover, Rising India. A super power rising. Uh, so that, that was you know, a, a very well acclaimed internationally. And of course, uh, it was a precision operation, surgically executed. And we are lucky uh, to be very certain about it. We are very, very lucky because we had uh, very little information. So that is the little bit of background to it. So, you know, but what was the request from the Maldivian president? Why did he seek Indian in intervention? And of course, we're all aware that there was a uh, coup attempt, but if you could tell for our viewers, for them to understand, to hear from your own words. You know, uh, the uh, Maldivian president, Mr. Gayoum, uh, he had been re-elected with about 98% majority. And on the 4th of November, he was to visit India. Uh, it was a formal visit uh, to India and he was to be, you know, sworn in on the 12th of November. That was a schedule. And on the night of 2nd, 3rd, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Maldivians, basically, headed by one Mr. Nasir, uh, with the help of PLOT. PLOT was an organization uh, of the uh, Umar Maestro. So with their help, they wanted to take over the Maldives, uh, uh, you know, islands, nation, uh, to help out the Sri Lankan, uh, you know, the insurgency and terrorism out there. Uh, so that, that is what they had actually done. They had taken over and the president went to a hiding. Now, when he went to a hiding, he went to a safe house. So the, the nearest that he could, the first thought was, you know, request to the U.S. The U.S. said, okay, we will do it. But uh, they, they moved from the Gugasia. The Soviet Union didn't respond. Pakistan did not respond. And Indians uh, responded immediately. I got a call around 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was sitting doing a normal work at the Brigade Major, the commander of Brigade Balsara. Excellent commander. No, no man could have done it otherwise without him. We owe it to him. So I got a call uh, from the MO director at uh, that time, uh, Brigade Malik, the former, the, you know, General Bibi Malik, the yeah. chief. He was then a brigadier in the MO directorate, so he had called up, but he didn't give an indication of where we were to go. 
And uh, then around 10 o'clock, I got a call from the vice chief. Honestly, the you know, vice chief of army staff won't call up a, you know, a major sergeant sitting somewhere in the country. And uh, I, I, you know, and those were days of telephones. The lines were not so good. And uh, he said, "This is the vice chief of army staff speaking." And I said, "Okay, yeah, yeah, what do you have to say?" I thought it was a staff officer. He'll put yeah. things, look, something required. Is this the vice chief? I said, "Yes, uh, yes, sir. But what do you want?" Is this young Roderick? I actually stood up on my chair. <laughs> I literally stood up from a chair and he gave me the orders and the orders were categorical. He, for the first time, he said, you move to uh, Maldives, right? Now, uh, uh, and he said, you know, it's been taken over. They have got uh, these, these weapons and uh, uh, I want a battalion to be um, training at 1230, now within two and a half hours. Now, that, that's uh, really, it doesn't work in the time and space, uh, you know, from a cold start, absolutely. When you're doing a normal training, people are deployed, they're doing the normal exercises, things are training. So, uh, to cut a long story short, we moved six para, which is my unit. Uh, fortunately, Brigadier Joshi, the CEO, uh, and uh, the three para was there, seven para was there, were all moved. And uh, in the initial spearhead, uh, the, uh, the you know, we had two aircraft, two IS-76, which flown by Group and Bivu. Uh, and we took off at around 5 o'clock, uh, 4.58 to be precise. And uh, we had very little information. The, the Mr. Banerjee uh, had come to Know, flown from Delhi uh, to Agra with, with Brigadier Malik, and then he showed us a photograph. They wanted us to do a para, para assault, a airborne assault uh, in Mali. Now, Mali is a very small island, actually. It, it, it's about less than, you know, about two square kilometers to be precise. It had a population of 50,000 in that point of time in 1988. Now, it's of course grown. So, we had two options basically to do an airborne assault, land, and second was to do an airborne landing, uh, the aircraft landing in Aluli. And then later, later in life, we realized that Halul is a different, uh, you know, island than Mali. Yeah. So we needed boats to go across. We couldn't. We didn't have the boats. And to cut a long story short, we are not sure who held the Halul airport. Right. Whether the uh, mercenaries, uh, the coup leaders held it, or the uh, the National Security Service of Maldives held it. We were told that it is safe, and we were given a code word. The code word given to us was <coughs> Hadia. Which and uh, the light. Hadia, Hadia, H A D I A, Hadia. I had the quote today. And uh, the lights would come off, uh, you know, three times and go off. And when we approaching the uh, Haluli airport, uh, I was sitting there. The navigation in the ice got a bubble. You see the nav navigation, you know, down to it. The pilots are on top. And I was sitting in there when the quote word came, I went to Brigadier Balsara. I said, sir, decision time. And uh, he said, we know we land. Right. And then they probably about 170 odd uh, troops, uh, basically uh, two companies of six para, one company of three para. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, the CEO was there, uh, RJ Jalan was the company commander, Jalan Khai, who was later on Jalan Khai, he was the major sub, he was there with three para. And the alternate aircraft again had uh, you know, alternate headquarters and more troops coming in, two aircraft were there. And that later on, I told me, you no, know, that was decision time. And he said, We land. That is the decision took, but look at the decision taken because even a small vehicle, a cycle on the runway, you know, when we are landing, and that was the last of the operation, the, everyone would have been blown off in the IL 76. And look and behold, hats off to him. We landed and we secured the airfield, and then we launched the operation towards Mali uh, with Brigadier Joshi and Brigadier uh, Ajayas Chillan. Ajay Chillan. And we were so fortunate that we could get hold of the president and we rescued the president. And when I informed the commander that we have rescued the president, and that is the mission given to us, you know, he said, you know, now be very careful. After having rescued him, we cannot lose it because there were fighting going on. Yeah. There was there were fire, firefights going on. But look at that man. He perceived that and he had planned it out. He didn't ask anyone any inputs. He said, look, we just go ahead and do it. And launched a dive in with three para, six para went from the southwest. We commanded boats, landed there. And uh, well, we are lucky we got the president. And then the president uh, said, Look, uh, I, <coughs> I'm not going with you. So then we secured the NS headquarters from there at four in the morning. And we got him about two, two o'clock in the morning. We landed around 10 o'clock, four hours. And by uh, four in the morning, he spoke to the then Prime Minister, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, from there. And uh, then we were told, Okay, let him be there. You restore the government of the legally elected government of uh, politics. So that is how it was. Okay. So he didn't come with you. He stayed there and uh, you restored the uh, legally elected government there. 
how many of these uh, how many uh, paratroopers had gone there sir you know initially you know, the first uh, first two aircraft uh, the first aircraft was spirit aircraft we had uh, six para two companies uh, a company of uh, you know uh, and and the brigade quarters the first aircraft Okay. The second aircraft, we had an alternate brigade quarter, we had a company of KKK Singh, who was 17 para, and a company of uh, three para. Okay. So, <coughs> sorry. Basically, two aircraft initially, the first one. And the 174 was the first one, the second one had about 100 odd troops. Was, and we had about 60 odd parachutes with us to, you know, uh, to do okay. an airborne assault yeah. in case we had to do that. And, uh, so when we landed there, we had to secure because it was diverted totally. We, it was very, and we didn't have any input, in, intelligent inputs, no inputs. Honestly, I did not even know where Maldives was. I knew some of the Indian Ocean was where I did not know. Uh, we did not have, you know, Google that time. We didn't have a mobile. We we, we went to the library searching for Atlas. Yeah. And in the Atlas, Maldives was just about a mark of the time yeah. spec. Yeah. We, we had no, no information. And uh, it was uh, Mr. Bender, you're carrying a coffee table book. From the coffee table book, we make out, we could make out there two different islands. No, we did not know who Mr. Guyu was. What did it look like? Yeah. You know, it, it's very easy to, uh, after so many years say that we succeeded. But we, we, we could have easily shot him. We didn't know who, who he was. We had a photograph of us, but how do you how do you get a photograph without a photocopy? I give it to everyone. No, there's no photocopy. <laughs> so easy. Right. So uh, but it was the training that mattered. It was the just of the troops, uh, you know, the, the willingness to achieve the mission. We were trained very hard. We trained very we used to train very hard. We still do. Uh, the training matter, the leadership, uh, Bredable Sara, Brigad Joshi, Arjun Dhillon, uh, the staff itself, I mean, should not give credit to them because there was a lot of pressure from uh, the army headquarters, the air headquarters. We had a lot of pressure from the political, uh, this thing that everything should not, you know, it's an international affair. And we would have got a very sorry figure had we not uh, succeeded. Yeah. And once we rescued the president, the president, uh, you know, he's the president, he will accept him. He didn't want to leave the island because had he left the island, then he would have lost the moral authority to. Exactly. We re-elected. Yeah. So he said, I said, and we had our orders. Now what do we do? And then, then after he spoke to me, the orders were changed. Now, now that you rescued them, restore the government. So we started sanitizing the area. In between, you no, know, they had taken the hostages uh, in one of the ships, and we progressed like, uh, which was manned by an Indian captain, and uh, we we saw it moving between the channels, and we fired upon it. And next day morning, you know, it was a proper joint operation: Air Force, Navy, Army. We all there. And uh, a postman of mine from Staff College had come in the aircraft uh, and he said, Look, we saw a ship lift listing. I said, That is the ship which has taken the hostages. So I know Godavi moved there, I know Befa moved there, they rescued the hostages. Not a single casualty whatsoever. Look at that, not a single casualty. So that is the, the you know, the operation was thing. And on fourth afternoon, I got a call that uh, the there was a US battle group with, you know, uh, with the LPH and others who were three hours sailing time away from, from Mali. So they wanted to do, you know, land. And then Brigadier Basara, he said, you know, they will not land. This place is too, too small for to hold so many troops. And by that morning or fourth, we had built up, uh, well, most of the brigade was built up. We had three para, six para, seven para, 17 para coming, guns, ammunition, our logistics started coming in on the fourth night, actually. And uh, it was one operation where everyone did the job. There were no orders being really passed. Everyone knew what to do. So, uh, well, uh, that's the uh, Indian Armed Forces for you. And this was also, in a way, you know, when I listened to you, this was also like a blind operation. You, know? you had your goal, you had your direction, but you didn't really know, you know, where is what. As you said, there was no Google, there were no pictures, um, you know, but still this operation was carried out and, uh, you know, successfully. So you mentioned that this was also a lesson for India, this operation. What did Operation Cactus uh, actually lead to eventually? No, what it eventually led to was that you no, know, we uh, we are a regional power, right? And we we have to uh, ensure that we go out in aid of our neighbors. So we, in that in 1988, you know, we are already in Sri Lanka. The IPK was there. Yeah. So that was already carried on, but IPKF went under a different charter altogether. Exactly. They, the, you know, the Rajiv Gandhi Javad Nair caught into Sri Lanka caught in 27. So that was slightly different. The charter kept changing. But that gave the confidence uh, to uh, intervention operations that had actually only been done by the, by, till then by either the US or the Soviet Union. Yeah. Or Israel for that. Israel in, in uh, Right. So we came to that league. And everyone knew that it was blind, like you rightly said, it was a blind operation. 
I think we we con we did it because we had a self belief. We were at training. We were you know a self belief that we can do it. Mission has to achieve. Uh, but the lesson learned for India was that we got to prepare for such contingencies. You know, you know uh, whatever the contingencies are, maybe in the neighborhood, extended neighborhood, or even beyond. But even want to rescue our own uh, you know uh, Indian diaspora from abroad, and we we have to look after national assets and interests. And it's been done. So we have to have forces. Capable, who are ready, who are trained, who are equipped, who are designated for this, and thereafter we started looking beyond that. Uh, like I said, the para brigade was, uh, you know, duly nominated to, you know, carry out such operations. So that was one of the major lessons there, and we learned how joint operations could be formally structured also. So we started moving towards that. Okay, so eighty-eight is what really rolled out joint operation, rolled out. Um, much more focus on you know capability to have quick move quickly and the operation right sir yeah absolutely rapid deployment was something which we lacked actually we had not thought about it and uh, so that that came to us uh, as a very good uh, sort of a lesson that uh, we we will will need to do it in the future also so uh, if you look at it beyond that uh, there after bangladesh uh, uh, hdr nepal hdr tsunami so we we had these uh, things planned earlier we were not uh, designated we were not equipped so we started uh, training started equipping starting you know organizing ourselves to that we we had uh, staff and commanders in place for joint uh, uh, planning and joint operation joint execution so there lot of good lessons came out of that and moreover what what it said the signal sent to the strategic community of the world was that india is there india has the capabilities it has a demonstrated ability to do such an operation because the us was coming in much later you see they came in next day morning at 3 o'clock and they were wherever they located they were located next to at the gokarchi we came we came from abra right so that is the where the where the lesson that we we our image uh, uh, as as a nation a uh, responsible nation a risen nation uh, with the armed forces which are capable of supporting the national interest projecting the national interest uh, looking after the region so that came into uh, focus so that was the game change i suppose perfect thank you uh, thank you so much general for speaking to our viewers about uh, operation cactus and telling us actually what how challenging it was uh, you know uh, and the fact that what really came out of that operation it was not just that the moldavian uh president was say but they, it also led to large scale changes in thought process as well as in operational doctrine of the indian military as well thank you so much general thank you very much jaihind